Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, you are doing very well and you have been enjoying uh, video lectures. Uh, I'm delighted to, to say that um, I'm fulfilling your need, providing you some alternative education. In this lecture, uh, I'm going to be discussing about uh, basic concepts for options. Um, you might have heard about options or might have read about options and uh, might be very much fascinated about what are these advanced uh, financial instruments or you know what kind of beast is that options or you know in fancy language finance language uh, we call it derivatives okay so let's talk about what are the basic basic concepts about options right so before going further let's take at some examples for example suppose you are a ceo okay you are ceo of a company and the board of directors they offer you bonus in case if and only if the stock price exceeds hundred dollars okay another example uh, in 2004 when Air France bought out Dutch airline KLM Air France offered KLM shareholders to buy additional Air France shares for 20 euros each on or on or before a specified date okay uh, let's say you own a farm all right and you are being offered or let's say you own a farm and uh, I'm an you know industrialist and I offer uh, offer you a deal that I'm gonna buy your crop you know in this year or next year at certain rate okay another example a uh, company may offer you know bonds and typically they do it's a financing instrument so they offer some sometimes they offer convertible convertible bonds uh, which are you know supposed to be mature at a certain date now each bond it can be exchanged for some shares at a fixed price before maturing date okay so all these four examples something they have in common okay what what it what is that what that thing is common in them is an option okay somewhere some sort of thing is kind of basically um, depending on the you know some speculative nature what's going to happen in future based on that you know they are, they are being offered an option, okay? So it's a very simple thing, you know. Uh, so this, this, think about uh, all these things, examples, and uh, you know, you will get a basic idea about what options are. Now, the options, uh, these can be, uh, you know, we can, we typically classify American or uh, European options. There is a uh, very, a little difference between both of these uh, an American option uh, it gives uh, a option holder to exercise the option or the right to exercise the option on or before the maturity date okay so before any time or up to maturity date you can exercise that option while the Europeans are a bit strict they don't uh, give that option the, the option can be exercised only at the maturity date, not before that. So that's a big difference in American and European option. However, uh, this tiny difference makes a, uh, makes a big difference when, you know, you want to uh, analyze the valuation or you want to analyze the, you know, uh, how much profit you're going to make and what sort of risk you're going to take and how much volatility you're going to be. So all those factors can be uh, a bit tricky when uh, you want to trade uh, American or European option. Okay, so we're not going to go de in detail into that, but for now, um, in this lecture, we're going to be assuming an American option. Okay, now options can be of two kinds or two types of options: call option and put option. Okay, so call option, what it is it gives it gives the right to buy okay 
right to buy an asset at a specified exercise price on or before the maturity date. Okay. So for example, if you have a uh, buy option, okay, and uh, you think that the stock price of uh, say company X is $10 or $100 and it will go in six months about $150. So you can buy a, uh, you can, you know, you can get, you can buy or sort of, you can trade or whatever name you want to call it. You can have a call option, okay? So that in future, say if the stock price jumps to $150, so you have a right to buy at say $100 because at that time you bought it and it crossed, you know, uh, if it doesn't cross, you don't have to exercise it, but if it crosses one, say, $150, so you essentially made, you know, $50 top up onto, you know, if you have that option. How much profits you're going to have? You can subtract whatever uh, was the, the money you have put towards buying that uh, call option. So let's say you bought in $20. So your profit is going to be 50 minus 20 equal to $30, right? Um, think about in, in that manner. So let's say you want to trade Berkshire Hathaway stock, which is a $200,000 stock. And you don't have $200,000, but you think that the stock going to go up in next uh, one year. And uh, its option, you know, is trading at a lower price than, you know, $200,000. So you can consider buying that call option. But again, the options are different than a stock. A stock or share means that you have peace in the business. You are a part owner of the business, but the options, no, you are not the part owner of the, of the business. You are just, you are just buying an speculation. So think about it, it's, it goes more in the line of gambling, okay? So in, you don't own a uh, piece in the business. You are just uh, trading sort of Trading and speculation. Okay, if it goes high, I'm going to make money. If it goes low, I don't have to exercise it. Um, that sort of thing is there. Value of a call option increases with the ratio of asset price to exercise price. Okay. So, say for example, if your asset price uh, is going high and your exercise price or a strike price, uh, you know, is constant then your option value increases. Or in either way, if the asset price is going high or exercise price is also going high and the ratio is increasing, means that the value of a call option increases. Okay? You don't have to pay exercise price until you decide to exercise the option. Therefore, a call option gives you a free loan. Isn't it interesting point? Like I was, I was just uh, a, a minute ago discussing with you that if you don't want to exercise, don't exercise. But let's say you have, uh, you know, you have a, a strike price 100, okay? And you say, okay, strike price is $100 and the option value to buy a call option is 20 for $100. Now you say that in six months, this price Six, uh, six months the stock price, six months the stock price is going to go to 150. Okay. So now if in six months, if you, uh, if you exercise, uh, if you decide to, you know, exercise this option, what's going to happen? So 150 minus 100 because you speculated when the uh, at this exercise price 100 or strike price 100 now it jumped so you just uh, top up for 50 and how much profit are you going to make 50 minus 20 okay. so you just made 30 dollar profit so you don't you didn't have to put right away $100 to buy a share. 
you just put $20 and that too you don't have to pay until or unless you decide to exercise the option. Isn't it beautiful? However, this, this is gambling. So be very careful. You are not a part owner of the business. You are just trading and speculation. Okay? Value of a call option increases with the interest rate and time to maturity. Okay? Now, call option have more rights. I mean, uh, you are free. Uh, if you are on a put put option side, you are basically uh, will do what, you know, a holder of a call option will say. So, in other words, put option is simply the other way opposite of the call option. It means that it gives the right to sell an asset at a specified exercise price on or before the maturity date. Okay. So, let's say for example, uh, instead of speculating say it will go to $150, what happens if it goes to say $50? and you have the put option, you are the holder of put option. So if it goes to $50, you say I'm going to exercise it, so your profit is going to be 100 minus 50, $50 and you know whatever is the price you paid to have the put option minus that and that's total going to be your profit. For example, for example it, it goes to $50. Okay. So you make money when the stock price goes down, when you have the put option. So you bought, you had the, you know, put option at a strike person did and it went down. Now you say, I'm going to sell. So essentially you are selling at $50, but think about it as if you have the stock or uh, think about as if, uh, as if the stock is 50 and, and uh, say you have already, you know, um, you are putting it down. So exercise price was 100, 50, so basically top of 50 and whatever commission you have paid, let's say $10 you have paid, so you end up making 40. But we were very careful. Uh, call options are better choice than put options. In call option you have right that you don't exercise but in put option you will have to sell okay if uh, holder of the call option is there to buy okay always remember option written on a risky asset is worth more than an option on a safe asset okay think about the technology stocks are very risky so if you buy options on technology stocks are profitable so high risky tech stock Option written on a risky or high variance uh, asset is worth more than an option on a safe asset. It's because we already said, see, remember, options are a speculation. So, so the more volatility is going to be or more unstable uncertainty is going to be in the market, um, swings going to be higher and that will, uh, you know, you can trade, uh, you know, short term trading, you can apply trading strategies to optimize your profit. So, um, well, going back in that line, um, so remember that um, these rules are um, not, you know, all the time like that, but it's observed phenomena. Okay. Now let's let's have a look uh, at this this table. So what do we see here? Say in December 2008, the company, uh, some company, uh, no, strike price uh, 370, call option, the value to hold. A call option or to have buy a call option 7890. Put option just 16. But you see, as the strike price is going high, okay, at this strike, a strike price is, is going high, the value of the call, call option is going low. So a strike price 
is going high. Value is going low. Okay. And the put options are the other way around. So if the strike price is going high in value, the put option value will be high. Okay. Uh, I shouldn't say value, I should just say the price because the value of the option is, is a different thing. We're going to be talking about the value of the option, but uh, I just interchange the words. So here the price, price to have a put option or price to have a call option uh, decreases as the uh, strike price going high. However, if the maturity, okay, if the maturity is increasing, then the price of a call option increases. See here 78.90 and in March 2009 the, for the same exercise price the price of the call option is high. Okay. And the same way for the put option in this in this case if the if the uh, maturity date or time to maturity is high the option value increases. Okay. So we can summarize this the value of a call option goes down as the maturity price goes high. Option price increases as the option maturity is extended. This applies to both call and put. Now let's take an example uh, because without uh, some sort of real example it's kind of difficult to understand. So I have put a hypothetical example. Two friends Howard and Bill. Okay, So they are betting on, on something. They are betting on a stock Lee quarter stock. It's a hypothetical stock. Uh, hopefully, someday this this company would be uh, would be on a stock exchange listed. Lee quarter. Um, check it out. It's it's just the it's just the beautiful uh, Lee quarter. It's a beautiful website. Um, so its current stock price, let's say hypothetical price is four sixty dollars, and the options are a strike price four fifty. Call option is price is thirty dollar. Put option price is twenty dollars. So these two friends bet. So they bet. Hey Bill, I'm gonna buy a call option, okay? Because I'm speculating that Lee quarter will rise. The Lee quarter uh, will rise six hundred in. Did a mistake. Price. I just did a mistake. See, that's what happens sometimes. Uh, excuse me for this mistake. It's a rise. If Lee quarter rise to six hundred dollars, okay, I will exercise this option, call option, and I'll make a hefty profit, good profit, six hundred minus four fifty is the strike price. And the price which uh, I'm gonna pay to have to to exercise this call option is thirty. It's one twenty dollars. So I don't have to have uh, four fifty dollars uh, right now in my pocket to buy an option for you know for Lee quarter. So I just have to have thirty thirty dollars for one option, and I'll make one twenty dollars. But now again, it's a speculative nature. Okay, but I'm confident that the quarter uh, gonna rise, will rise. Okay, now Bill says, Howard, be careful. Okay, I think uh, it will go down. Okay, I'm gonna buy a put option because if it goes down to three hundred dollars, I'm gonna make four fifty minus three fifty minus twenty because I'm gonna pay. Twenty dollars to exercise the put option, and we'll make eighty dollars. I'm a bit conservative. I don't want. So now you understand how these things work. So now what happens that uh, the Howard can have more options. So if if he has only thirty dollars, he cannot buy a stock of a quarter, which is four fifty dollars. He'll just pay thirty. He just pay thirty bucks to have an option, and if it goes uh, you know, high in value in six months, which is his target to sell that stock off, 
and you're gonna end up making hefty one twenty dollars uh, profit. So he can basically have more options for same amount, and his profit will be multiplied. You know, the same. It's a multiplier with the same multiplier. So think about it. Um, but again, it doesn't mean that they have the ownership stake. They are just gambling on speculation. Uh, you can have, you know, you know, you can you can have, uh, you know, you can buy the stock if you have that much price. But then you are the part owner of any business. So think about it. Okay. So ideally, you should have some strategy uh, in your portfolio for having your stocks and options. How much money you wanna uh, take risk on options and how much money you wanna keep aside you know, for having the you know ownership in the business. So it's a kind of uh, again goes back to the portfolio uh, theory and portfolio management area. Okay. Now let's talk about the option valuation. Okay. There are different methods for option valuation. Uh, you might have seen in the textbook uh, binomial tree method. Uh, however, binomial tree method is just you have at, at one point you have two, two choices at one uh, period. Uh, in binomial tree method, I, I can draw it down. So let's say you are at time zero, then you'll go time one. What is the value can be? It's so only two values. You kind of go and you make a tree binomial tree. It's sort of a Boolean thing, which is a bit difficult to calculate and also not very effective. Another method is black souls. Black souls uh, um, to a scientist or to economist, uh, along with one one other, I forgot the name, and they they found this wonderful formula. And apparently, uh, because of this uh, option pricing, they they got Nobel Prize. Uh, however, they they just you know as it happens that uh, we should not be trusting all mathematical things you know in real market. They founded the company. Uh, long-term capital management and that got bankrupt and that company got bankrupt it, they they just thought okay they are the great they are the guard uh, they can you know make money uh, just the option but you can never know the market in in real real world you can never uh, know the future you don't know which way the market will will take its turn Okay, so never ever just blindly follow what formula says. Apply your own common sense about the market. Okay, anyways, that option valuation formula uh, given by Black Scholes is still valid. But before discussing that formula, let's talk about some some um, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about hedge ratio or option delta. What it is. Uh, delta is a spread of possible option prices divided by spread of possible share prices. Okay, so that's that's the delta. Okay, how much is the the spread of the options divided by spread of the shares? Okay, so let's say you wanna uh, speculate. Okay, in in six months, um, six months, uh, the the quarter call option. Uh, might be you know 30 to 10 to 30 range possibly spread and uh, possibly stock price is gonna be say 500 spread to 450 so that ratio basically is your delta or has ratio or option delta okay now let's talk about the black scholes formula the value of the call option is nothing but this delta multiplied by the stock price minus the bank loan the money which you have loaned at a risk-free rate, okay. And uh, we can also represent it via um, uh, uh, by this equation, okay. So essentially, this option delta is spread of possible option prices of possible share prices. Here, I just give had given the simple number, but essentially, it is a probability distribution. Because you don't know, you really don't know, so it is a continuum. So it will be like a probability di distribution. Okay. 
from there you will get this uh, the delta value okay so n uh, the probability density function of normally distributed okay t1 multiplied by stock price minus n d2 multiplied by present value of the uh, exercise price okay now this this is a tricky to calculate because you can't apply just uh, just the simple formula what you are applying for for regular assets we will see so what it is uh, so the d1 is uh, you can say the d1 delta is log of p divided by the stock price present value exercise price divided by uh, sigma root t plus sigma root t divided by 2 and d2 is d1 minus sigma root t okay and nd is, is the, the cumulative normal probability distribution function or probability density function cumulative normal probability density function okay ex exercise price of the option pv present value is calculated by discounting at a risk free interest rate rf okay Uh, sigma standard deviation per period of continuously compounded rate of return on stock okay t number of periods to exercise date okay so if you are say talking about say you know six months one year so that sort of thing so if it is for half a year you can say t value is 0 0.5 for half a year okay if your uh, period interval is one year okay now let's let's talk again the hypothetical stock leak order okay so we have price exercise price uh, sigma t uh, risk free rate and three um, percent per annum uh, roughly you know compounded this interest rate on a compounded basis okay so what is the step first? Step first is you calculate the D1 and D2. Calculate the D1 and D2. How you can calculate it? Okay, we have this formula which we learned. We apply these values in the formula. Okay, and we get the value of 0.1998. In the same way, we can calculate the D2. Okay, we get the value of D2 minus 0 0.0878. All right. Okay. Now, step two. Find the ND1 and ND2. What, what is ND1? Or you know, for example, ND1 is the probability that a normally distributed variable will be less than D1. Standard deviations above mean. Okay, so that you know, you can you can find from a Excel function, non ST, non S for a standard, ST standard, DIST. Okay, and and D1 and ND2. Uh, norm STIST. So you can calculate norm STIST. So you can calculate N1, ND1, and ND2. Okay. And you just simply plug in all the numbers in the above formula. Okay. The value of the call option will get the 60.18. Okay. So now again, now if your value of the call option comes this one and uh, you know, then it goes back to the again same principle. What do you do? Do you buy it? Do you, do, you don't buy it? Okay. So that's a different question. Okay. But essentially what it is saying that in six months, uh, the value of this call option would be this, this much. Okay. Now, um, Another thing uh, I thought to discuss with you guys, uh, option trading. Uh, you might not be looking at formulas or a bunch of complex calculations. Uh, you just want to go online and trade. There are so many uh, trading platforms where you can trade options. Um, there are many strategies, but out of those strategies, which I find is sort of uh, more valuable to you guys, would be this strategy you might have seen this candlelight pattern or candlelight diagram so this is basically depicting an uptrend you see uh, now the whole discussion about the candle candlelight these diagrams 
what it signifies is and all. The, these are, I would be discussing some other time in some tutorial uh, about uh, when I will, will be doing technical analysis. Uh, but nevertheless, it just simply remember that, you know, empty candle diagram uh, going uptrend. So this is signifying the uptrend. Now there is a meaning of, of these candles, you know, how high is this bar, how low is this bar and how big is the candle and so on. There are different different things, but here in this lecture, just to let you know the, the structure or, or what it is. So this is uptrend and in the same way we have the downtrend, solid candles, okay. So what is the strategy we should be following, okay. So let's say call and put a strategy, okay. At the bottom of downswing, okay, this is the downtrend, at the bottom of downswing, buy a call. You buy a call here and at the top of an upswing, at the top of an upswing, sell the long call, okay, and buy a put. Sell the long and buy a put. And at the bottom of next downswing, okay, so this will go in a cyclic pattern, okay. So let's say this is going and this is going in a next cyclic pattern. So here at the bottom of the next downswing, okay, here, sell the put and buy a call, okay. So that's a call and put strategy together. Now let's, let's see only the call strategy. At the bottom of downswing, okay, at the bottom of downswing, buy the call, same thing. At the top of upswing, sell the long call and buy a put. Okay, sorry, sell the long call and sell a covered call. So that's a little difference if you have only, only the um, call strategy. So you sell the long call, here also we are selling the long call and instead of buying a put, we are also selling a covered call, okay, here. And at the bottom of next downswing means here, buy the covered call and buy the long call. So here we are selling the put but instead of selling we are just buying the covered call along with the long call, okay. So this, these are two simple you know uh, easy to follow fundamentals for uh, option trading, um, okay, call and put strategy and call only strategy. All right guys, so thank you guys, uh, I hope uh, uh, I made some contribution to your learning um, via this lecture. Thank you very much for watching uh, Lee Professor uh, video lecture and thank you for subscribing. Um, your response is amazing uh, and uh, that is uh, motivating me to create, uh, create uh, more interesting uh, lectures for your learning. Um, those who haven't subscribed, I would recommend you to, to subscribe the Professor YouTube channel. Um, that helps you to notify, get notification as soon as I upload new videos and also motivates us that uh, you guys are liking our, our videos. And if you, are, if you are struggling with corporate finance course, you may also contact us for private lessons. And thank you once again, have a wonderful day.